at night, I'd go to bed in the nighty, wake up in the night and sweat would be pouring like off me and I'd have to take my nighty off because I was like that wet. I had to have an ultrasound done, which revealed that I have a wound, but it was very small and that I only had one ovary and that the mm -hmm. ovary they found basically didn't have any eggs in it. Did it affect you or did it affect your mum more? So my mum was crying so much and I'm trying to console her and then the doctor went to my mum, well, it's not as if she's going to be trying for a baby now anyway, so she's not going to understand. And then they said that I needed to go on HRT, which would protect my bones against osteoporosis, um, and that I would then be put on, say, the HRT to have a withdrawal bleed every month, so that the lining of my womb was kept healthy, so that okay. if I did later on down the line try IVF, because it would be IVF egg donation, because obviously I have no eggs. <laughs> I couldn't relate to anything online, so everything I looked at was always about your 50 year old lady. So I'd look at it and think, well that's not me, mm -hmm. that, that, that doesn't relate to me. And because I wasn't told of anywhere to go for any support, anything to read, I kind of just went into my own little bubble I suppose, um, and put my faith in the NHS and they just told me I needed to take these tablets, so that's so just what I was did doing. Did you just get on with it? And for me, I always decided in my brain, because I grieved in my sort of mid-twenties and everything, I then decided that for me, I wasn't going to go back to a place where I was in a bad place and relive it all again. Yeah. So I always just thought, for me, adoption is going to be the route that I want to go okay. down. Yeah. Okay. Because at the end of the day, that baby, even if I'd carried it, it wouldn't genetically, biologically be me. And I know it might sound a bit selfish that I'm not giving my husband that chance, but he, I was so lucky because he understood and he accepted it yeah. as well. But at the end of the day, if I hadn't found that person that didn't understand that that's what I they wanted to do, yeah, yeah. yeah, then they yeah. weren't the right and person. Yeah, you've chosen to speak out about your own and help other women, what made you have that decision? My de decision was made really because of I've now started, to, me and my husband have started to try and adopt. Mm -hmm. So I originally started an Instagram account to follow my adoption and wow, <laughs> <laughs> like people couldn't believe that it even happened for a start. Some were like, oh my God, I can't believe you've come out and said this, like, I never expected you to be able to have like to come out and, and finally sort of own it. Um, but how I saw it was that if I am going to have a child and adopt, you have to be honest with that child, really, from day one that they're adopted. Mm -hmm. It's such a big thing for them to know their identity, where they yeah. came from. And I just thought, I can't bring up my child if I'm holding something back and not being honest with myself. You recently featured in Davina McCall's Menopause documentary, mm -hmm. which has had such a reaction. Um, what has the response been for, like for you? Yeah, amazing. Um, now I've just helped, so it seems, so many other people that are suffering in silence. Yeah. Because it's something... And, and is I, it women of all ages, or have you had young, any women in their teens come forward and say, I'm going through the early menopause. Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. yeah. So, and it's more ladies at the moment that unfortunately when they are trying to have a baby, they are then finding out then. Okay. And my heart breaks for that, for them ladies, because they're actively trying to have a baby. And like, I think for me, because I've just grown up my whole life now and I'm never going to have this baby. You've always had those years mentally prepared yeah, that, yeah. where they I have been. quite a shock for yeah. them. So the documentary obviously got picked mm. up by the national press um, and you said there was, as always, when you put yourself out there with these kind of things and these stories, anything fertility related, anything to do with gynecological issues, mm. you will always get these kind of odd negative comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Um, so when I first started talking out, I put something on a Facebook group about menopause and I got some ladies being really nasty to me and they were saying, you're lying, you're trying to get attention, that can't happen to someone at that age. And I took it so badly. 
I was crying for like about three days afterwards. And my mum was like, Hayley, if you're gonna do this, you've got to toughen up. And I was like, and I responded to them like, how dare you, this has taken me 25 years to talk out and now I've finally found the strength. And I felt a lot of anger towards them. Yeah. But now I just laugh at them because this is my life, this is how I'm living and you just don't have a clue yeah. what I've had to deal with. So carry on with your negative comments because they're not gonna bother me. Like, exactly. I, I'm now ready to own this and tell the truth. Do you think that actually shows that there is a need for education in menopause and yeah. that it's not spoken about enough and the way it actually probably is portrayed, um, you know, the terminology that we use, do you think that needs to change? There's ladies out there that just be like, oh, it's just a norm, just get on with it. It happens to every lady. But And that was one of the comments that I got. But it's not the norm for a teenager to go through it. And fortunately, I was put on HRT, but unfortunately, I was put on the wrong dose. So okay. I then suffered many, many years of menopausal symptoms, which really, when you're on HRT, you shouldn't be getting because the HRT is topping your hormones up and you shouldn't be getting these symptoms. So I spent many years going to the doctors for, for things and they do, the doctors weren't linking them, that they were menopausal and I kind of got made to feel like I was a hypochondriac um, and this is where so much more training needs to be done in GP surgeries as well because unfortunately they're not trained to, to know much about the menopause. Social media can be bad at times but God, it can be good when you need it. <laughs> um, there are so many support groups out there, like the Menopause Charity, the Menopause Support Network. Like there, there, there's Facebook groups. There's say your Instagram community. Get as much knowledge as you can from from these places, and basically. There's checklists on there that you can do and take to your GP. There's letters that you can, like generic letters that you can send in and change just your name and things. So there's there's a lot out there, but you just need to know that it's there because I didn't have a clue that this community was on Instagram um, of menopause at all. So I think getting that out there is something that needs to be done as well. Yeah. So women realise they're not on their own.